Can you guys see my friend in the corner there? Turk, what you doing, little man? Hi, buddy. Are you watching me and thinking what in the world is she doing? <laughs> you cutie pie. All right, hey everyone. So you've met Turk, which is right in the corner right there. He's a cute little um, Pomeranian crossed with a papillon. So good cross, he's a really cute guy. Um, we're gonna be talking about risks associated with working in the field of wildlife conservation or wildlife health. So if some of you don't know, I am a Arctic researcher. I work on wildlife health. Specifically, I work with diseases that can be transmitted between animals and people. Um, but with my job, it involves a lot of risks. And so I'm gonna give you a bit of insight if you're interested in a career path with wildlife, some things that you may want to consider, some things that you're going to have to face as you pursue that career. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing that you may or may not have considered is environmental conditions. So it depends on where you go. It's gonna be very different in a tropical location versus the Arctic in my circumstance, um, but you're always going to be faced with environmental conditions that are going to be hazardous to your health. So for example, in the Arctic, it's very cold. You can get frostbite very easily. I actually caused nerve damage to the tips of my toes last year in the Arctic. Um, you have to be very prepared. So you have to do your research and figure out what risks are going to be associated with the environment that you're traveling to. So the next thing that you have to consider is disease. So when you're in close contact with wildlife, you're always going to have the risk of diseases being transmitted between that wildlife and yourself or other people that you come into contact with. So you have to be very well educated on the diseases that are prevalent in the species that you're working with. And you have to know how they're transmitted, what you might be exposed to, and you have to be prepared for what you might be exposed to. So that usually involves bringing up prophylactic drugs. So things that you can use in case you get an infection. For example, when I go up to the Arctic, I always bring a round of antibiotics that I can use for the pathogens that I know are circulating in the wildlife population up there. So you have to be well aware of what those animals may be carrying and what you might be exposed to and what you might expose other people to when you get back to civilization. All right, the next thing you have to consider is what you would do in an emergency situation. So when you're working with wildlife, the majority of time you're going to be in a remote location. That means you might not have access to internet, you might not have access to a cell phone. So it's very important to have a method where you can contact people in emergency situations. And that can be with an inReach, you can have a satellite phone, um, but keeping in close contact with someone that is able then to relay an emergency message back is very important. You can have certain circumstances where someone has a heart attack or someone gets attacked and you need a method to be able to communicate that to civilization, to the proper emergency responders so that they can come and get you. Okay, so the fourth situation that you have to be prepared for is if you get attacked. So whenever you're working with wildlife, you're gonna be in close contact with them and you may get attacked by whatever you're working with or by other species that are in the ecosystem that you are working in, right? So in many cases in North America, for example, that would be bear safety, but in any ecosystem, you have to be well aware of the predators, well aware of what you're going to be exposed to and what may attack you in a, a rare circumstance. Um, so for bear safety, for example, you need to have a PAL, so like a, an acquisition license. You have to be able to carry a firearm. You need to know how to shoot a shotgun. You need to um, have bear bangers and know how to use them and uh, always carry bear spray with you, right? So 
in a situation where I cross paths with a grizzly when I'm up in the Arctic, thankfully, I don't have any polar bears where I'm going. That would be a little bit different, but you have to know bear behavior. You have to understand what um, aggressive behavior looks like on a bear, what to do in a situation if you get within 100 meters of a bear, all of that good stuff. So it requires a lot of training and you have to be well prepared before going up, before putting yourself in that situation. And then the fifth and final thing that is risky for anyone that's working with wildlife is transportation. And this is because you're probably, again, going to a very remote location. And what you're going to need to be transported on may not be the safest thing, right? So. In remote locations, typically the way that you get in is by a twin otter or by a helicopter. And also when you're doing research with wildlife, you typically use a helicopter. So for example, when people are doing caribou collaring, you use a net gun and you're in a helicopter chasing down the animals and netting them. Um, same with a bear. Um, we use a helicopter up in the Arctic to transport us to different goose colonies or different parts of a goose colony because it's kilometers and kilometers and kilometers away from us. But you always run the risk of having a crash when you're in that situation. So there you have it. Those are the top five things I would say are risks when you're working with wildlife, things that maybe not everyone thinks about but they're constantly things that I have to think about when I work with my foxes up in the Arctic. And maybe this gave you a bit of insight. If you're looking into doing something with wildlife, you're probably gonna run into all five of these things at some point in your life. All right, so I'm gonna take off and get ready to go up and work with my foxes. And I will see you guys very soon in another video. What do you think about all this? He says, you're crazy talking to yourself in front of a camera.